Andy Murray has won the US Open and Wimbledon. Do you one day dream of being a Grand Slam champion? Yeah, I know it's really hard work, but hopefully if I like work on my game and pull it together, then maybe it will happen one day. <laughs> well, the last few weeks have been quite eventful to say the least, with Daniil Medvedev denying Novak Djokovic his record-breaking 21st major title. Team Europe winning their fourth consecutive Lever Cup. And Yannick Sinner taking out the Sofia Open. Although, it was 18-year-old Emma Raducanu who'd taken the tennis world by storm and shown us that the future of the game is in good hands. Today, we look at the life and rise of Emma Raducanu before she became the youngest woman slam champion since Maria Sharapova at Wimbledon 2004. Like, yeah. Raducanu was born on the 13th of November 2002 in Toronto, Canada. She was born to a Chinese mother and Romanian father, moved to the UK at two years of age and started playing tennis at age five. With both of her parents growing up in communist countries, education was considered the only option if you wanted to become successful in life. So thriving academically was very much expected of her. Fortunately, the young girl developed a love for many sports during her time at Buckley and Newstead Wood Primary School. It was sports such as golf, ballet, skiing, motocross, karting, horse riding and tennis that won her heart. She had to make the tough decision of choosing just one sport to focus on or would risk spreading herself too thin. Her parents liked to push her in all areas possible. Although when they saw Emma develop a keen interest in tennis, they were more than willing to entertain the idea of her becoming successful outside of the traditional ways that they had grown up with. Fortunately, the habits that they instilled in her were certainly transferable to the tennis court. It was her idols such as Simona Halep and Lee Na, who are natives of Raducanu's ancestry, that inspired her to dream bigger. In the words of her early tennis coach, James Carlton, Emma is incredibly single-minded and determined. She works very hard. The center is next to her school, so she would be here before, after, and sometimes during. We would often see her working on schoolwork in between sessions. She was here every day, and when she was on court, you could see she was putting everything into it. Doing that while maintaining her schooling and academia is even more impressive. In 2018, Raducanu won multiple junior titles across India, including the ITF Sangdigra and the ITF New Delhi tournament in straight sets while also reaching the girls singles quarterfinals at the US Open and Wimbledon Championships. Despite turning professional in 2018, at the age of 15, she alternated between both professional and amateur tournaments during both 2018 and 2019 in order to gain as much competitive experience as possible. Through her early experience, she developed a distinctive style of play. Known for being an aggressive baseline player, with a specific focus on offense, which allows her to hit a considerable number of winners. Her ground strokes have been described as world-class by many, including former British number one, Anne Kiefervong. Prior to the world being shut down in 2020, Raducanu had limited yet considerable success in the professional arena. Her most notable win was taking out the ITF NECC Deccan $25,000 tournament in Pune, India. She won it in three straight sets against Nakifa Baines in December of 2019. The following year was mostly an opportunity to refocus on her academic studies. While playing local exhibition matches and small tournaments when it made sense to do so, the LTA British Tour Masters title was secured by Raducanu in late 2020. In 2021, however, when we all became familiar with the name and face of Emma Raducanu, the year didn't start as well as she could have hoped. Though making her WTA debut in June at the Nottingham Open, but lost in the first round to fellow Brit Harriet Dart.
In late June, Raducanu made her Grand Slam debut at Wimbledon as a wild card and showed very promising signs. She was ranked number 338 in the world prior to the tournament, although managed to reach the fourth round, becoming the youngest British woman to make it to the final 16 in the Open era. Uh, Emma, how was that? <laughs> Raducanu experienced breathing issues in the second set, forcing her to retire from the tournament. Wimbledon followed with a Silicon Valley Classic, in which she lost in straight sets to world number 23, Zhang Xiao. This prompted a change of coaches from Nigel Sears, father-in-law of former world number one Andy Murray, to Andrew Richardson, one of her former youth coaches. The US Open would prove to be quite literally life-changing for Emma Raducanu. Having only a few weeks to train after completing her A-level studies three months prior, in economics and math, and needing to win three qualifying matches in order to enter the tournament. Here, I have to say, from my own perspective, I think I'm playing better tennis here than at Wimbledon. Um, and, it, and of course, being on the hard courts, they're less forgiving than grass. But um, honestly, I think with the amount of matches I've played and the experience that I've accumulated in the last four or five weeks, my game is just getting better with each match. On her road to glory, she defeated the likes of Olympic gold medalist, Belinda Benzik, 18 years old and the semis of the US Open. Zhang Xiao, who had bested her earlier in the year. And number 17 ranked Maria Sakari, to name a few. It's true. Emma, when you arrived here three weeks ago to play in the qualifying, what gave you the belief that you could be here today playing in a US Open final? I think I just believe in myself in general and the time has flown here in New York. Uh, just been taking it one match at a time and it's got me to the final. So I'm uh, going to go out there and enjoy it today. Raducanu went on to defeat fellow teenager Leila Fernandez in what was the first all-teenage US Open final since 1999. This sudden Yet dramatic success surprised even Raducanu herself, admitting in post-match interviews that she had booked her plane ticket home two weeks earlier than necessary. Was there any thought in your mind, even teensy tiny, hey, maybe I'll come home yeah. the US Open champion? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, three weeks ago, I did not think I would last the whole trip. Uh, I thought that I'd be home in a week after qualifying, but I mean, I've just been doing my best to take care of every single day individually and to the best of my abilities. And then three weeks later, the time's flown and I was holding the trophy at the end. Um, but yeah, it was the best time of my life here. The betting odds of her winning the tournament were 100 to 1, with world number one Ash Barty, Naomi Osaka, Anya Sablenka, and Simona Halep topping the list of favorites to win the title. Not only did Ranakanu win in dramatic fashion, she broke and set many milestones in the process, all without dropping a single set. She became the first qualifying player to end up winning a Grand Slam, the first British woman to reach and win the final since Virginia Wade in 1968, and the record for fewest majors played before winning the championship. Despite having parents that are hard to please, she was delightfully surprised to hear her father admit you are better than I thought. Thanks for watching Breakpoint. Be sure to like, subscribe, and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We will see you in the next one.